you may be wondering what uh, the rule language looks like. Uh, the rule language, most security lives within Apache, and the rule language we have is sort of evolved within the constraints of the Apache configuration syntax. And uh, it's designed basically to make the most common things very easy to do. And it's also designed to make the complex things possible. Um, and you, you'll see how this, uh, uh, this lo works uh, later on. But basically, here's what you will do in your, in your rules. Um, more security will pre-parse everything. It will give you access to the data. Then you can transform the data in, in, in many ways in, uh, uh, to counter evasion or to just um, extract some pieces of information. And then you uh, look at it, and then you decide what, uh, what you want to do, it, uh, do with it. And furthermore, you can combine rules to make complex logic. Uh, and I'll have some examples here. Uh, a rule simply has three important bits, which is the targets, which is uh, th those are the places where you want to look at. Operators, uh, how you want to look at them. And then you have a list of actions that you can apply once you decide that uh, there's a match of some sort. And you can see the, the first example. Um, in the first example, we are looking at two different places of a transaction. Uh, the args uh, uh, parameter that's actually looking at all request parameters that have um, uh, been received. And then we're also looking at all request headers. And then we'll be looking for a pattern, regular expression pattern, script, open bracket script. Uh, this is a very simple signature, if you will. Um, and on the second line there, you, you can see some metadata. We've given an ID to the rule. We've, uh, we have a custom message, which is a cross-site scripting attack. We've configured severity. And we've chosen to deny, to block a request that has uh, the open bracket script uh, anywhere in the, in the parameters or the request headers. And we've chosen to deny the request with status 404. So this is just scratching the, 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 uh, the surface of what's, what's possible with, with more security. In the second example, we have two rules that are actually chained. In our terminology, chaining two rules creates a more complex logic. And then in the second rule, we're looking at just one very specific, specific parameter. In this case, that's the parameter username. And then we're checking that username against the string admin. So what we're looking is a script that has the uh, uh, admin username. And if that matches, we're also going to check the remote address from which the request is coming from. And this rule is going to match uh, if the IP address of the uh, user is not 192.168.11. So the idea is that you would install this on a login script uh, where the administrator is logging, and that you are going to warn or do something else for all logging attempts that are not coming from this specific internal IP address. So this is a sort of kind of additional uh, uh, security, security feature. So what makes secu most security easy to use is that we have 78 variables uh, that you can use, and we have pretty much a variable for every single thing that you have in a request or in a response. So the, all, the only thing you need to do is look at the table, see what, uh, what uh, variable you're interested in, and, and write it in a rule. Um, and then uh, the second thing you need to do uh, is choose how you want to process this data. And that's, uh, for that, you use operators. And we have a bunch of operators. Most people use regular expressions. But there's a bunch of others. We have 22. So we have. Um, uh, uh, regular expressions, we have parallel matching, which is quite efficient. Parallel matching is where you have a bunch of strings, a bunch of patterns that you match, match all at once. So with regular expressions, you match one regular expression pattern against a piece of data. With parallel matching, you can have 10,000 patterns ma all matched at once with the, send the same piece of data, which speeds up matching uh, tremendously. And then, of course, we have numerical uh, parameters. One of the things I haven't mentioned is we have all this, Mod Security is an old project. It's been six years now, and we've accumulated feature over the, features over the years. So there, 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 there are quite a few really cool things that you could do. And one of the things that, uh, that we do is actually we process XML. So if you have XML going through your application, uh, you can parse it, you can validate it against a DTD, you can validate it against a schema. Um, and uh, you can actually then use an XPath expression to look into any part of the XML payload, extract that, and then you use any other operator that we have to actually look into that and, and analyze it. 
And we have a, a bunch of other things such as uh, uh, we can use a real-time blocking list. We have GeoIP lookups. Uh, we support, I think we're the only web application file that supports, uh, supports file inspection. So you can apply an antivirus. Uh, you can run a file that's being uploaded against an antivirus product and determine whether there's, it's safe to uphold or not and so on. We even have a, a, a special operator that you validate uh, credit card numbers because um, you don't really, to, to reduce false positives, uh, regular expressions are not enough. So we have additional logic to, to verify that a number is a valid credit card number. And finally, actions. Actions are also the equally, equally powerful um, aspect of mode security. We have 42 actions, which is quite a high number. And uh, they, they, they're, there are many categories. Uh, we can block. Um, we can. Uh, block in different ways. We can influence logging, so, so that we choose to log uh, or not log scientific arguments. We have an internal state. Most security has its, its internal parameters, which, which you can set. You can increment, you can decrement, and there's also support for anomaly scoring. You can tell most security to uh, gradually reduce a value of a variable over time, and so on and so forth. So it's uh, quite uh, uh, featureful in, in that sense. And we, we have pers persistent storage. Uh, by persistent storage, I mean that uh, you can take a look in an IP address, and you can start tracking that one IP address and keep some information on it in your database. So you can have a counter, just as an example, that you increase every time something suspicious happens, uh, happens from that uh, IP address. And I, I, I'll have examples to, to show how it's done. So OK, this is the third part. We have roughly half an hour left, which is plenty to go to a, a, a bunch of nice examples. That's right, uh, 15 minutes. Um, we'll reserve the rest for questions. Um, so here's just one example, ignoring static content. Unless you tell it otherwise, most security will spec inspect every single request that comes to your web server. Um, but in many cases, you don't, ha you don't have a need. You don't want to inspect uh, um, the, the static pages. So here's one way to uh, tell most security to back off of the, 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 the static files. Basically, this is the Apache configuration syntax. And you say, everything that falls into a G folder, we just want to turn most security off completely. And that's how we gain in, in performance. Because you, don't, you just don't spe spend time inspecting something that's never going to be a problem for you. Um, we have a, a different way to do the same thing, and this is a, a chained rule that cons uh, consists of three different rules, uh, where in the first rule we look for a get or head request, if it's a get or head, and if the file name ends, ends in JPEG, GIF, or PNG, and if there are no parameters to, in, in the transaction, we can skip that processing. We invoke a rule called allow, uh, an action called allow, which basically says, tells to more security to stop processing this particular transaction. So th this is a, a handy way to increase performance of more security without actually having to go in inside and look into what, where uh, static pages uh, actually are. OK, um, virtual patching. I mentioned virtual patching is a very good use case. And this example shows you how easy it is to actually perform virtual patching. Um, uh, uh, let's suppose that we have uh, isolated a vulnerability in the script called apps slash script.php. And we want to basically lock this script down. We want to use a positive security model. A positive security model is where you only verify that all the inbound data is safe and is known to be good. And you're not, making a, you're not trying to...